every day morning i get up i think about what i can do to mitigate these challenges how this category from water from air can become bigger more universal create more impact save lives of lot of children in the world empower the women save millions and millions of animals who which die because of not having water and more animal die because of thirst than because of poaching sometimes in the middle of the night i got up suddenly out of a dream and then i realized that sometimes i get a lot of positive dream that we are able to produce lot of quantity of water from air and we are able to move in the direction of our vision of enabling life on earth through safe water sometimes suddenly i get up and i see a very disturbed dream where i see children are suffering animals are dying and all that and the so much that we can do and we are not able to do but one good thing about my dreams are they are all sustainable and all esg compliant so even in dream i am making sure that my dreams are sustainable so when i think about india world at large and the next 20 25 years to come the kind of challenges we are going to face it make me think that it is the time that we start looking at water as a subject more seriously we all of us have to come together to do our bit because in coming days the demand for water is going to increase many of you will be witness of a transformational journey of our country from a developing country to a developed country by 2047 our economy will move from 3.8 trillion dollar right now to almost 30 trillion dollar by 2047 we will be investing trillions of dollars in technology we will be investing trillions of dollar in semiconductor facilities green hydrogen of course construction infrastructure agriculture food security with the increase in population will have lifestyle increase so again the demand for the water will go up so somewhere all the action the economic activity that are happening today will not happen in isolation they will come with increase in demand in water and where is the supply right now if you see the, the sub source of water is mostly is from rain water which itself is not predictable which is not uniform just imagine an air of a drought and all the developmental activities that we are talking are so water dependent just to give you an example one data center of 15 megawatt will require 1 million liters of water every day and india is planning to have 1780 megawatts of data centers by 2030 leave alone the demand that we are talking about agriculture industrial use or green hydrogen or any other applications and even to understand what kind of a challenges we are going to face during this journey of ours of 3.8 trillion dollars to almost 30 trillion dollar you should have a understanding of where we are today as a country india is home to 18% of the global population with only 4% of the water reserves in 1947 we had 5000 meter cube per capita availability of water in 2024 while I'm, when we are discussing this subject the availability of water is only 1345 135 meter cube per capita so almost we lost 75% of the water 
in last 75 years. That is, we are losing at the rate of one person per year. And there is so much of deficit of water today, and we are not even having an iota of imagination, how are we going to address those challenges? And all these data points that I'm talking about will give you much more insight and the urgency at which we have to move forward. We are ranked 133 in the world in per capita availability of water. But unfortunately, number two in water consumption. Our rank in water quality index is 120 out of 122 countries. So what did this, all the data points indicate? The urgent need to look at this subject more seriously to not only put more policy decisions and all that in place for meeting saving rainwater or rainwater harvesting, we also have to address circular economy of water so that we use the water more times and we so that we single use of water should be avoided. Non-revenue water, which is like what the kind of water that we lose in plumbing or leakages or through in the distribution network or the old pipes, leakages and all that. At the same time, we need a new category of water. A new category of water which will complement and help the existing sources of groundwater and surface water. But this category of water also should be safe, sustainable, distributed, because finally water cannot be a centralized solution. Water has to be distributed so that people do not have to spend a lot of time in going and getting that water. They have to come, the water should be available where they consume the water. So, while one alternative, see, one possibility is the amount of water that is available in the air. Just to give you some insight into what the amount of water that is available in the air, we have almost close to 18 billion meter cube of water in the air at any given point of time. And it gets replenished 40 times in a year. And there is more water in the air than all the rivers in the world put together. And 1% of that water is sufficient to meet the portable water requirement of the world. Now, one side there is a huge challenge and another side is the category where there is so much of water is available. So when I started thinking about how this technology can be used, but also in my personal life I have seen my mother suffering. We were staying in Ahmednagar in Maratwada region in Maharashtra. She used to get up every day morning at 2.30, 1.30 in the AIM only to get few buckets of water. Her whole day was around water and she used to worry in, in the night. I have not seen her in my childhood. Many a times I have seen my mother was awake in the night only because she was worried by the time she missed that 1.30, 2 o'clock time. She will not have a water for the next day. And as I grew up, I have seen, I was in Hyderabad, there is, I don't know how many of us, you know, there is a Nalgonda, the district which is close to Hyderabad, is known as the fluoride capital or a fluorescent capital of India. Thousands and thousands of people suffer from fluoride. A reason you know they are suffering. Unfortunately, there is no technology which can remove the fluoride challenges and it can only reduce to partially. And I have seen people crippling because there is a skeletal fluoresis, there were other kind of fluoresis, kidney element. And it's very unfortunate that when we are in so much of technology that once we are talking about reaching on to the Mars, we are talking about reaching on to the, everything and anything in the world and the science, but we are not able to address the fundamental issue of safe water, which is the fundamental right of a human being. It is the fundamental right of flora and fauna. And we are allowing them to die, we are allowing them to suffer. And there is a solution. Somehow the investments that are required to make the water portable, the amount of investment that are required to make the water safe have never happened. 
whether it's a Srikakulam where we have a uranium traces and all that and a lot of people are dying because of kidney failure or you look at the cancer diseases that are there in because of arsenic areas in the world in the east. So this used to hurt me very badly. I used to think what could be done about all this. But being an in mechanical engineer, I started working around all this, but never got the momentum that is required. I was working on this, then I was seeing what is happening in the world in this particular technology, how this water from the air captured. So generally, I came to know there are three different types of technology. One is the fog harvesting, which produces little, not so much of quantity of water. Then there is a desiccant technology, where, which is generally used in a low humid areas like deserts and all that, but again, a very challenging and a low quantities of water. Then, of course, the most popular, most accepted and scalable is condensation technology. So when I got deeper into condensation technology, I realized that the initial research was, was being done in uh, universities in US and Canada. And uh, mostly this research never got commercialized or even whatever little it got commercialized was very expensive because in those countries the environmental conditions do not allow you to produce water from condensation because the dew point is higher than even the outside temperature. Dew point is lower than the outside temperatures and all that and then it cannot be produced. And then there was some development that was happening in the Israel, Israel did develop, but that was very, very expensive machine which could never be commercialized. And so this technology has never captured the imagination of the world. So I was working on this technology, trying to experiment, build together and all that. But the watershed movement in this for me came in 2017, when there was a World Entrepreneur Summit in Hyderabad. And uh, Honorable Prime Minister of India said that when this Israeli technology was demonstrated, he said India should have this technology. So I thought the moment for which I was waiting, the validation that I was waiting has come and now is the time for me to develop this and conclude this machine. And in 2017, when we, I got seriously into the whole thing, I left everything that I had, I, whatever resources I have put, deployed everything. All my resources, all my savings, all my time, I left my other businesses, started focusing. And I can proudly say that in 2018, we produced completely 100% indigenous, made in India, designed in India, developed in India, atmospheric water generator, a machine made in India for the world. And 2018, we could deploy our first machine. And from there on, we have deployed hundreds and hundreds of machines and save, are able to save millions and millions of liters of groundwater. And a new ray of hope has come to the world that, okay, this technology is scalable, this technology is adaptable. So what were the challenges that we, I faced during the development of this machine is something that is very interesting because, see, it looks so easy in terms of when you say condensation technology, but the fact remains, same machine have to work in di different geographical conditions, different environmental conditions, different climatic conditions. Then there is a re boundary conditions of relative humidity because it works on a dew point. So relative humidity and temperature both are required. So you should have an optimum or at least a minimum relative humidity and uh, uh, the temperature should not go below certain level. And then it should, it's being distributed, it got to be very compact, light, and the water that produces should meet the standards of WHO. It should meet the standards of Bureau of Indian Standards because it's a portable grade water. And so it should be affordable, easily deployable so that people don't have to have a lot of technology to use the machine. So went through all this and then finally we could build machines right from 25 liter per day to a 5,000 liter per day. And we built the India's first 2,000 liter machine per day. Then we built India's first 5,000 liter per day. Then we got the India's first bottling water plant. See, very important for all of us to realize that the moment we step out of the house, there is no safe drinking water source. So what are we doing? We are buying only plastic bottles. And the bottled water, two things are happening. One, we are encouraging the RO technology. Later of 
water that you are drinking, there are three liters of water that is getting wasted in our world. And then you are also bringing so much of plastic into the world. I will show an impact. So, whereas when you use the water from air, every liter of water that you use water from air, you are able to save two liters of the water on the ground and also allowing the water to reach to recharge more and also making this water available for someone who needs it more than you and see the first rate of water is always with flora and fauna somehow the whole planning that is happening in the world today we are very human centric we are trying to see that everything how the we develop we consume we do the, that and we are not including our, even on the wildest of thought we are not worried look at the number of animals that are dying in Africa because of thrust and there's no water for them Look at the jungles and jungles that are totally getting barren, wetlands that are disappearing. Because in our planning we are not taking, we think that if we live, if our generation lives, it's enough. Many of us forget that water is not that we are inheriting from our ancestors. We are borrowing it from our future generations. And we have the responsibility to give it back to our future generation, the same quality and much better quality, more quantity, so that they are safe because the demand for water is increasing in the future generation. So we not only have to give it back what we are consuming, we have to make sure that we get added, we add more quality and quantity to it and give it back to them. So each one of us can play a big role in making this world a better place to live by not only promoting this category, but also saving the existing sources of water, contaminating them less and making sure that we use all the technologies that are available with us to see that we don't contaminate them, we, we reuse the water, we don't send the water from the crops directly without recy reusing, recycling or whatever, but we just try to see that it is get cleaned and it's done and then we were treating it and then sending it to the water body so that the water doesn't go directly. In see, unfortunately, the industrial water go directly. Very less treatment happens. Agriculture water with all the nitrates, all the urea, all the pesticides, insecticides, it goes into the water body. It impacts the life. And, and the slowly what is happening is the availability of water is coming down. So it, this is the time all of us have to come together and do our bit in making this world a better place to live by not only investing in water from air and popularizing and trying to maximize that, but also use, doing our bit to safeguard the existing sources of water. Thank you.